guys, welcome back to my channel. So a couple of weekends ago, I helped to decorate for a 40th birthday party slash graduation party. My client was getting her degree, plus she was celebrating her 40th birthday, so she decided to just have one party for both. Now let me tell you guys, so many things went wrong with this event you have to stay tuned to the end of the video so that I can tell you what happened, all right? First, let's get into the setup and then we'll get into everything that went wrong.
graduation party let me know in the comments what did you think how did you think everything came out so I have to tell you guys this event was so challenging for me I am really happy that my client and her guests they love the decorations people just kept coming up to me and telling me you know how hard we were working to get the event set up but I have to tell you guys, a lot went wrong. So first, the venue set up the room incorrectly. The loading dock was not working. The gate where I was supposed to pull in my truck to unload all of my decorations, that was broken. So I ended up having to walk through the lobby and walk a longer way just to unload all of our decorations. That took a long time. And with this event, the venue did not provide any tables or any chairs. So my client had to rent everything. Those round tables, those shivari chairs, that lounge furniture, all the cocktail tables, those all had to be rented. And guess what? The rental company was running late. So my client's party was supposed to start at six o'clock. The rentals didn't get delivered until 5.30. So we only had in a half an hour to set up all of the tables, right? We had to put together all of the tables, put all the tablecloths on them, put the centerpieces on, put the chargers, the plates, the cups, the candles. So unfortunately, the party ended up starting late. I had to tell my client's guest that we were not ready because you know when you're setting up an event, clients always, their guests, they always come early. You always have some guests that are gonna arrive 15 minutes before the party starts. So I had to tell all of the early comers, unfortunately, we were just not ready for them because we were still trying to set up the tables. 
We had bags everywhere, right? There were still balloons everywhere. It was a lot. So the first lesson that I learned from this event, and this may sound mean, but I just want to be honest, there are some venues that I am not going to work with. Unfortunately, this hotel that I worked with for my client's event, it was the most unaccommodating hotel I have ever, I have ever dealt with. Usually, when my clients are having events at a hotel, the hotel provides the tables and the chairs, right? The hotel has a catering manager, a pl an event planner, right? People who help out with the event. But it just seemed like with this event venue, they gave me a hard time. So even from the beginning, they were only going to give me two hours for setup. And they weren't providing any tables in any chairs. I just don't understand how that could possibly be enough time, right? So I had to push to get more time from them. On the day of the event, when their loading dock was not working, there was no apologies, right? Their attitude was just deal with it. There was a director who was there and she wasn't really helpful. Another big lesson that I learned from this event, and here's some advice to you, when you are coming up with a floor layout, so where you're gonna put the decorations in the room, you have to pay attention to where the outlets are. So for my client's event, she had those 40 marquee numbers, she had the DJ, she had a photo booth, she also had a cello, you know, a lady who came in to play and all of them needed an outlet, right? All of this needed an outlet and the outlets were pretty spread out in the room. So unfortunately, the photo booth lady who came, she was pretty far from an outlet and she didn't have an extension cord that was long enough to get to the outlet. So I kept having to stop what I was doing with the balloons. I kept having to stop what I was doing in order to try to find her an extension cord. And so I asked the lady who worked at the hotel, who was supposed to be the director, and she said there were no extension cords. I found that hard to believe because it's a hotel. How can a whole hotel not have one extension cord, right? So she was being really unaccommodating and the photo booth person didn't know. She kept saying, well, should I move the photo booth? Like, what should I do, right? So we ended up finding someone else who worked at the hotel who brought us an extension cord that she could use. Then the cello, when the lady who played the cello came, she said, where do I set up? Because I need an outlet, right? So you really just wanna make sure when you're coming up with your floor layout, make sure you identify every single person or every vendor that's going to need an outlet. And then when you do the venue visit, make sure you're checking. Make sure you're checking to see, okay, if you place somebody somewhere, is there an outlet for them? Because if there's not, then you need to communicate to them that they're gonna need to bring additional extension cords. I always have people that ask me for extension cords when I am at events, okay? And the last lesson that I'm gonna share with you guys is about those shimmer wall panels, okay? So I'm pretty sure that you guys noticed, I set up those shimmer wall backdrops in front of windows. The whole venue, honestly, was nothing but windows. There really wasn't that many walls in there. Now, thank goodness, as the night came, right, as the sun went down, the shimmer wall ended up looking very beautiful. It was shimmering, right? You could see it, and it wasn't see-through. But during the day, when my client's event first started, you could really see through that shimmer wall backdrop. This is my lesson to you, and I'm gonna make sure that I do this going forward. Whenever I'm coming up with a floor layout, I'm gonna explain to my clients that shimmer walls actually look better on a wall, right? So you don't wanna put those in front of windows. 
you don't want to put that in an area where there's so much light coming through them because then it's harder to see the shimmers okay all right guys so those were some of the lessons that I learned from this event. I also want to let you know that I have a sale coming up on my pricing classes. You guys ask so many questions on pricing. So I have a really good sale coming up next week. Make sure you stay tuned for that, all right? I'm going to put all the links for the materials that I use in the description of this video. If you have any other questions, please let me know. And I'll see you in my next video. Mm -hmm.